Hi, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. In this video, we're going to look at the healing brush in Photoshop Elements. Like the spot healing brush and the clone stamp tool, the healing brush can be used to remove unwanted items from a photo. We're going to see how it works and how we can use it to remove stuff from our photos. So let's get started. I'm using Photoshop Elements 12 for this video, but it works with other versions as well. Let's start by creating a new layer in the Layers panel to put our fixes on so that we don't change the original photo, which is on the background layer. If you don't see the Layers panel over on the right side of the Photoshop Elements window, go up to the Window menu and click on Layers to make it visible. My Layers panel is showing, so I'm not going to click on it. To create a new layer, Click on this icon that looks like a piece of paper with a folded over corner. To show how the healing brush works, I think it will be helpful to compare it to the clone stamp tool which I did a previous tutorial on. So I'm going to go over to the toolbox and click on the clone stamp tool. What I want to do in this photo is reduce the wrinkles under this woman's eye. So I'm going to zoom up on her eyes by holding down the command key and spacebar on a Mac, or it would be the control key and spacebar on a PC. My cursor changes to the zoom tool. I'll continue holding down those keys and place my cursor between the eyes and click a couple of times to zoom up on that area. and now I'll let go of the keys and my cursor returns to its normal state. One other quick thing before we start is to make sure that Sample All Layers is checked down in the Tool Options. It's right here. Mine is checked, but if it's not checked, just click on it to put a check next to it. And if you're using a version of Photoshop Elements that's version 10 or older, you'll find the Sample All Layers at the top of your window in the Options bar. I'll switch over to Photoshop Elements 10 temporarily to show you where that's at. So here we are in version 10. You can see right here sample all layers. This area up at the top of the window is called the options bar. So let's go back to Photoshop Elements 12 now. The reason we need to have sample all layers on is because we're doing our changes on the new blank layer that we created, which means there's currently nothing on that layer to sample. By turning on Sample All Layers, it will sample from the layer that does have something on it, which is our background layer. Now with both the Clone Stamp Tool and the Healing Brush, you basically sample one area of your photo that I call the Source, and then you move your cursor to another area of your photo called the Destination. But I wanted to show you the Clone Stamp Tool first because it's pretty straightforward. I'll place my cursor over this wrinkle under her eye so that I can size my cursor to make it a little bit larger than the wrinkle. I'm going to use the left and right bracket keys on my keyboard to size my cursor. The right bracket key will make it larger and the left bracket key makes it smaller. These are the keys that are just to the right of the letter P on your keyboard. I want to include these little wrinkles here so I need to make my cursor larger. I'll press the right bracket key a few times until it's slightly bigger than the area of those wrinkles. Now I'm going to move my cursor down under the wrinkles and use this smoother area as my source. And with both the Clone Stamp Tool and the Healing Brush, you define your source by holding down the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC as you click once. So I have my cursor over the area that I want to sample. Now I'll press down the Option or Alt key. And notice that my cursor changes to a crosshair icon. As I continue holding down the Option or Alt key, I'm going to click once with my mouse to sample that area. Now I can let go of the Option or Alt key and my cursor changes back to a regular circle. When I sample an area like we just did, I like to think of it as I loaded those pixels to the tool that I'm using and now I'm going to bring them over to my destination area. So I'll move my cursor over to the start of the wrinkles and click and drag. Notice as soon as you press down the mouse button, a small cross appears over the source area. And as we continue to drag over the wrinkle, the cross moves in parallel, showing what the current source area is. When I get to the end of the wrinkle, I'll release the mouse button. 
Well, the wrinkle's gone, but the results are unacceptable. Before we try the same thing with the healing brush, I'm going to rename this layer to Clone so we can compare it with our results later. I just double click on the layer's name to highlight it and then type in the new name. Then press Return or Enter to accept the new name. Now I'll turn off the visibility of that layer by clicking on the eyeball next to it. Now we see the original wrinkle. Let's see how the healing brush handles this. I'm going to click on the Create a New Layer icon and make a new layer to put the Healing Brush Edit onto. I'll click that and I'm going to name it Healing. Just to keep things straight. Now let's go over to the Toolbox and make the Healing Brush active by clicking on it. It looks like a Band-Aid and is right next to the Red Eye Removal Tool in the Enhance section of the Toolbox. But it shares that spot in the Toolbox with the Spot Healing Brush. The spot healing brush also looks like a band-aid, but unlike the healing brush, it has a curved dash line by it. So you might see that there instead of the healing brush. Whichever one is there, click on it, and then, if you need to, so I'll click on it, and then if you need to, you can choose the healing brush from down in the tool options just by clicking on it there. I am going to switch over to Elements 10 again temporarily because I know a lot of you are using versions of Elements that are older than version 11. So here we are in Photoshop Elements 10 and here's the healing brush and if I click on that and hold a pop-up appears and it shows both the spot healing brush tool and the healing brush tool because they share that same spot and then whichever one you want to use, you just click on it from this pop-up menu. Okay, so let's get back to Photoshop Elements 12. The Healing Brush, like the Spot Healing Brush in the Clone Stamp tool, is another way to fix areas of your photos or to remove objects like blemishes. The Healing Brush shares a unique two-step process with the Clone Stamp tool. The two-step process is that you sample one part of your photo, referred to as the source, and transfer that sample to a different area of your photo referred to as the destination. So, as we saw earlier with the clone stamp tool, you use your source to fix your destination. But here's the difference between the two. The clone stamp tool transfers an exact copy of your source to your destination. With the healing brush tool, you transfer the texture from your source area, but then the healing brush uses the color and brightness from around the destination area and blends that color and brightness into that texture. I'm going to turn the visibility back on for our clone layer for a minute. So let me do that. I'll just click on the eyeball again to turn it on. And I want to show you that basically we took the pixels from this area and then we copied them to this area. I'm going to hide that clone layer again by clicking on its eyeball. Before we use the healing brush, let's look at how to set some of the options in the tool options. And again, if you have Photoshop Elements 10 or older, you'll find these options in the options bar located at the top of your window. I always use a hard edge brush with the healing brush because it blends it in a gradual way so you don't have to worry about getting a hard edge even though you're using a hard edge brush. The size I always adjust using the left and right bracket keys on the keyboard because I can see the size change as I press them. If you click on the brush settings, you'll see the brush settings dialog box appear. This is where you can make the hardness 100% if you need to change from a soft edge brush. I'll leave the spacing at 25% and the roundness at 100%. The size field here is only of concern if you're using a pressure sensitive tablet. Since I'm just using my mouse, this setting won't matter and I'll leave the angle setting at 0 degrees. Since these are the default settings, for the brush settings dialog box, I never really even look at these settings. But I just wanted to show you what it was and that if you have to change the hardness or if you have a tablet, you might need to adjust these. So I'll close the box by clicking on the X. 
I usually leave the align box unchecked. That means if I drag along my destination area for a while and then release the mouse button, when I press the mouse button again, it'll start at the area where I originally option or alt click to choose my source. If I have the align box checked and then I let go of the mouse button, when I click with my mouse again, it'll pick up from where the source point was when I let go of the mouse. If I found a good area of texture for my source, I probably want to keep going back to it. That's why I'm going to leave it unchecked. In the source field, you have two choices, sampled and pattern. If you choose pattern, you can choose anything from the patterns library that comes with Photoshop Elements. But it doesn't blend the pattern with your destination area, it just replaces the destination area with the pattern you choose. So I always leave this on sampled. Mode refers to the blend mode. We'll leave that at normal. And since we're doing our edit on a new layer, we have to make sure that sample all layers is checked. If it's not checked, just click on it to check it. Remember, the healing brush uses the texture from the source area and uses the color and brightness from around the destination area. I can demonstrate how that works. Uh, let me zoom back down a little bit. I'm going to hold down the Option key on a Mac, or it would be the Alt key on a PC, to sample my source from this band around her hat. Let me size my brush up a little more first. I'll click to sample. And now I'll move my cursor over her hair and click and drag. At first it looks like it's going to copy the red band, but after I release the mouse and it gets done blending, you can see it's the color and brightness of her hair and just the texture from the hat. There is actually just a bit of the red color from her hat, but it's pretty minimal. And if I click and drag on her cheek, again we get the texture of the hat and the color and lighting from the surrounding area. I'm going to undo that and let's get back to these wrinkles. I'll hold down the Option or Alt as I click once. And I'll try to sample the same area that we did with the clone stamp tool. Now I'll move my cursor over the wrinkle and hold down the mouse button as I drag over the wrinkle. Once I release my mouse button, it blends it in. For the most part, it looks great. It blended it very naturally, except for this dark line at the end. That brings us to the major drawback of the healing brush. Because it uses the color and brightness from the immediate area around the outside of the brush, if your destination butts up against a contrasting edge, it will blend that unwanted color or brightness into the destination. In this example, it's not a big problem because I can just make my brush size smaller and drag over that line. And because my brush was far enough away from the dark edge of her eye, it blends in with the skin tones. But let's quickly look at what commonly happens and what the solution is. I'll create another new layer to demonstrate on. Let's say we want to get rid of this band around her hat. I'm going to zoom back a little bit so we can see this better. So I'm talking about this band up here. First I'll size my brush with the bracket key so it's a little bigger than the band. Let's move down a little bit. And I'll grab a sample from up in this area. Then I'll click and drag along the band. After it gets done blending, it looks great in the middle section, but when we get close to the edge between the hat and the background, you can see elements blended some of the gray background into the hat and it looks like a gray smudge. So I'm going to undo that by pressing Command or Control Z. To avoid that, if you have this type of a situation, first use the clone stamp tool to clone out the part right next to the edge, in this case the edge of the hat. So I'll switch to the clone stamp tool, click to sample, Right there looks pretty good. 
and I'll bring it down to there. And maybe I'll clone a little more in there. And then just to be safe, I'll do this other side of the band as well. So I'll sample here and just clone that away a bit. Now I'll switch back to the healing brush and I'll grab my sample up here and now I can just drag over that and I don't have to worry about getting too close to the edge and it blends it in really nice and I don't think you would ever know there was a band there. There's a little repeating going on here so take a new sample and drag over that and when it comes to people's wrinkles sometimes it's more believable if you reduce the opacity of the healing layer to bring back just a hint of the wrinkles so it doesn't look unnatural. Here's my healing layer. I'll make that active and then in the layers panel I'll go to the opacity. Just click and drag down the opacity to bring back a little bit of that wrinkle and 65% looks pretty good and if I click on and off this eyeball we can see our before and after. So there's the before and there's the after. And it looks pretty good. So that wraps up this video on using the healing brush in Photoshop Elements. Let me know if you have any questions. Until next time, this is Rick saying take care.